So Richard Powell is our wonderful guide through one and two minute poses for this week. And in this drawing, I really love the way he approached this. He starts it off with a nice big curve down the back. You know, there's often in the torso, a really nice big curve to get things started. And then you wanna to start to find the big rib cage mass and the mass of the pelvis. That's always a great starting point, especially when you have short time. The thighs are still turned into these tapering curves but he doesn't taper them to almost nothing like he was doing in the other poses. This time he lets the knees be a little bit chunkier, maybe because the model is a bit chunkier, a bit more muscular. And he added some indication this time of some of the bigger muscles or groups of muscles. So there's some indication of the quads. He doesn't use too many lines. So the fact that he's decided that these muscles are important enough to have lines means something. You know, the musculature of this model is important enough to get some lines in this pose. And then the legs are elongated and the head, head shrunken. That's his like stylistic choice. Hi, my name's Kenzo and this is Love Life Drawing. So first I followed his demo a few times through just drawing with him. And something I thought about was how he might exaggerate and greatly simplify stuff but he doesn't mess with the balance. So the angle between the knees and then more importantly, between the feet, that stays true. Th that angle helps explain the ground that the person is standing on. And then the line through the figure provides balance and weight. So if something is pushed too far in one direction, the balance is retained. So this, the other side is also gonna be exaggerated in the other direction so that overall the weight and the balance stay correct. And you know, you often see people building up more detailed and nuanced, sophisticated drawings with tonal rendering and all this kind of stuff that might take an hour, whereas Richard Powell's takes a minute. But Richard Powell's drawings feel more real, like they have more solidity because he gets these fundamental things right. And so even if you build up more and more detail, if the weight and the balance aren't there, the person's not gonna feel like they're in a real place or like they have any real weight to them. So I then try to just take some of the principles from that we're learning from Richard Powell and do them in another pose. So here's some more of Richard's notes. He said, I try to pull my lines, especially when defining a large action or shape, because that allows gravity to do all the work and allows me to focus on controlling the line. He also said, I try to make bold, direct lines, even if I miss the mark. And he said, if he, if he makes a mistake, he can just make another one over that one. If you're having trouble with a pose, stop and take the pose, he said. I'm more concerned about the feel of the pose rather than accuracy. And he also said he tries to draw interesting poses. So these are not always something bizarre like hanging upside down or twisted into a pretzel, but more about the juxtaposition of curved and straight lines. So notice how he uses big C-shaped and S-shaped curves, and he kind of sets those off against really nice, sharp, straight lines. And then if you're interested in the materials that he uses, he's just using copy paper and a Mitsubishi High Uni 10B pencil, which is obviously super soft, 10B. He doesn't sharpen it to a point, but removes enough wood to expose the graphite and it will sharpen with use. I don't think you need to feel like you need that exact pencil to do what he's doing. It's much more about the mindset and about the editing things back. I used a crayon when I was doing my efforts at his style. I looked for that big curve around the back of the torso. And then on the front, I allowed there to be a little bit more complexity because I felt like that's okay when it's set against that big simplicity across the back. And then in the thighs, those big tapering curves that we looked at that bring so much movement and flow to the drawing. And in the car, oh, similarly in the forearms, the big tapering curves, and then in the calf muscle, those big C curves that he often uses down the shin, either a straight or a sort of concave line coming down when you're looking at them from the side. I tried not to get dragged into the details of the face and the hands. You know, it's an exercise in discipline to hold back from some of those things and just focus on the big picture. 
and I looked for that balance that we talked about, the line across the feet. I did feel like I was starting to be less conservative, but you know, it feels like I didn't realize how tight I had been when I'm doing these drawings and trying to draw like Richard is like stretching and I'm starting to stretch out, but there's more that I, you know, I need to stretch further. So that's the challenge for tomorrow's practice is to really take things to more of an extreme. I feel like, you know, we're halfway there and tomorrow we're gonna nail it, right? <laughs> we'll see what happens.